Hi, welcome back to another Archicad Speed modeling tutorial by ASM Tech Base. My name is Carsten Endy. Join the ASM Tech Base email list for newsletters and future updates. In this quick tip, we model an EV docking station for electric cars. I came across this uh, on Adrian Smith and Gordon Hill architecture website and I thought this looks pretty cool. So if I go back down here, So here I got some images here from what we want to construct today or something maybe similar. All right, let's get started then. Okay, I start with this setup in the file. I'll show you in 3D what I got. So I just really simple um, drew a curb around where the cars will be parked to charge up the electricity, bit of asphalt, grass and I have a roof there. Okay, so let's have a quick look again, the constructions. I wanna create now those beams, the round beams, going into each corner, starting from here. So if I look at my section, which I also set up, this is a spline, very simple spline, use the spline tool, okay, to create roughly the shape you're after. Um, I take it one meter away, starting here and I also put a middle line here that just help lines same with them um, in the ground floor those two blue lines they just help lines so I want to start drawing them from here going to those corners one more thing before I start it's also the roof it's a flat roof and I did create a roof and I used the roof tool and just made it flat if you keep it flat obviously you can use a slab but in case you want to tilt it slightly let's make a tennis example then you can do this too with the roof so I do what they do keep it straight so let's go back and and you notice the edges are slanted in so what you can do is we select this roof and you just go on the edge here and you click and this option here will give you the option to slant it in so i go there and let's just try 30 and see what happens it's important that you go all edges otherwise you will just do this one here i clicked which is good too sometimes but in my case i want them all together at 30. so all edges okay there we go and it's landing just like we had um, in the picture I think that's a good start up. So let's go back to our drawing. And to do the first one, you saw I created this spline. I'll copy this now because I need this spline exactly like this in my ground floor plan. The reason is I will create the round column shape with the beam tool. The way you do is you open the beam tool and obviously just normal settings but make sure it's round and i got a material on it and put it on 3d beams uh, let's make it 300 and that's good enough for now so let's just see what happens if i now draw now instead of just clicking 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 you use the match you want to so you go a bit closer you hold down the space bar and we click there you go let's have a look how that looks in 3d all right i think that's pretty good I'm not sure if it's too thick but let's have a quick look if we now compare i mean if you now rotate this now we can't rotate this as a beam tool so what i do is i drag a copy drag it roughly here and we right click and we convert this i have to probably click on this get a bit closer convert selection to morph okay great so now go to our a2 and we should be able to see this beam somewhere here hopefully but oh it's just beneath the curb that doesn't help 
let's move that one up make sure the groups are not suspended and let's drag this up a bit i just couldn't see it it was behind the curve there you go now because it's a morph we can rotate this and i made a copy because i did put in 300 but i got a feeling it's a bit thick let's have a quick look it's very easy to adjust this all right have a look, look in 3d yeah see that's too thick so let's just delete this delete this and we go back so you can now sell it because it's still um, a beam right we can easily change the thickness so let's go and do 200 there we go and we drag another copy see that's again you sort of sometimes that's the way you design you know sometimes with the eye you can see when i go back here i could see it's way too thick but because i'm from a photo i can't measure it so i have to go by eyesight and compare the dimensions you know the way they look so i think 200 could be good so let's convert this one to my morph okay that's good that's 150 now in in um, in size okay good yeah that's pretty good actually now we have to have a look if i move this in here and rotate that we have this long enough i did this first from the section that way so you can see how it works so let's drag this and we drag this around here very nice and we rotate And we go like this. All right. Now, obviously, this won't fit, but I did this on purpose because, again, I want you to see how it works when we have to go and model exactly to this corners example. How do you do that? So, what you do is, for this purpose, let's just take this and we drag a copy. You go there and you rotate there to there okay now i've got a3 so let's open a3 and we do um, a new tab all right so as you can see now that this doesn't fit so i could have done that in the first place but that's because it's a tutorial i like to show you what i would do so i have two options it's very close i could try to stretch it out but it's much easier if we just redo that quickly so let me delete this i'm going to a1 we copy this go to a3 and we paste this in actually you know what i can't see where the middle is you know what let's undo this quickly so i have to stay now oh, that's much better paste so we take this go in there all right see and now what you have to do is obviously you take this and you take this further to there i can delete this now for now see and now you just adjust this a little bit if you're not happy with this just you know move it it's actually not bad there you go yeah and you maybe saw before that the beam was slightly off at the bottom that is because see this this comes back into itself so in theory i'll show you what i mean if you want to be really exact it's roughly there see it's slightly off so what you can try to do is we move this but you see you have to make sure that this is inside that line so you go up here You see it's going up and slightly inside that line so let's just delete that so i think you will see in a moment the columns i mean the beam views will be much nicer straight at the bottom so this is good i think this will work so again we copy this okay let's have a look in 3d now yeah that's pretty good it's going right out there beautiful beautiful okay next one is you have to do 
this one just exactly the same and then we just mirror them over and then you also got to make sure you see here you got this connection is not right at the moment so we have to adjust this if you go back here you can see they have an yeah you can see it's sort of cut off here all right so let me do the other ones quickly okay let's have a look yeah that's pretty good i can see this one is a little bit too low here yeah because i did it from up there but that's okay actually quite good because this is a morph element what you can do is now and you got to be careful you have to be in the morph tool here and you gotta make sure it's suspended had it had it not suspended so if i click here on my left click see i can't this is coming up so nothing can do so i have to suspend them the groups and you click again and then you can choose this tool over here oops this one here see that's box stretch so click there and you can see you kind of box down and with this box you go up here there we go click and you stretch that right underneath and you hit enter okay there you go all fixed and this one here as example you can see let's go and turn it around yeah i got to move that a little bit you can see all right not bad okay you can see now the next bit is we have to make sure we can cut them off so we had this section before let's go back to this one here let's move that one just about there that's okay and oh this in a new tab this time i think that's better let's go over here let me say open a new tab if i can well let me do it oh no it's already open isn't it we got three i didn't see that one okay so to cut this off you just really do get another morph and you just draw along here Again, this is purely, look, I'm doing this purely design-wise, how I'm going along. So in 3D, you can see now I can go and stretch this. See, and this will be my cutting element. So if I move this into cutting elements, I have them on wireframe. See, there you go, if I undo this, you can't see wireframe but it's actually quite nice having the cutting element layer on wireframe so if i use my solid element operation now um, operate elements target subtraction execute okay so let's have a look go back to working and actually i obviously do have that on let's turn that off There you go, let me cut it off. Okay, it's not perfect here, but again, you know exactly how to do it. And you repeat this with the, you know, with stretching it a bit or just move the cut a little bit. It's quite easy, you go back into 3D, cut is still there. You say, okay, look, let's just move it as example there because it keeps cutting it. So if I go back here, see the cut moved. How easy was that? And then you just do this with that one on this side okay so you got the both cut and now the next step is always to mirror them over but you have to be careful i'll show you if i just do this now and you would take them and mirror them over i'll show you what happens so we mirror them over and a copy go there And because 
you don't have the cutting elements. You see, it hasn't cut this. Now, two options. You obviously mirror the cutting elements too. Let's do that. So we go here, take those, and let's mirror a copy. All right, so they cut. I would recommend that because if you need to change the cuts or you, um, if you don't want the cuts, I mean the yeah the the, the cutting element layers, you just convert this to another morph and then you don't need this. But I think this looks pretty good now. So we go there, just as we had it before. Let's have a quick look. If I go back here, yeah, it looks pretty similar. Let's have another look here. Yeah, that's pretty good. The roof, obviously, you know, you, you can see they got, you know, they got some collectors here. I think if you go there, yeah. You know, that's quite simple to add at the top. Now, remember, I said if you want to have this more on a slanted angle, you can. So let's just go to my working layer and you take this and let's just make it like eight. Okay, so it's going up a bit. Now, obviously, so before, all you have to do is you have to take those and stretch them up. And in this case now, you would have to convert them to morphs again, because if you stretch them up, the cutting will not stretch with it. So what you do is take those two and we convert them to morphs again. There you go. Cool, so if I go back to my export, I've got this now slanted. All right, that's really cool actually, I like that. Okay, now to make, to us, let's add some sun collectors and cut a roof, okay. Okay, let's add some sun collectors and um, cut a hole into that roof. So let's go back to our roof here. I select the roof and to cut in a hole, you simply go there and we go, roughly here and we just cut that in here okay i just did this by eye but to make it more exact let's go now from there to 30 so make it um what you got here zero to 30 to 30 so that should be 200 exactly and let's do the same here 330 so it's 130 Okay, that's quite nice what we got here. 137 and over here we got 140. Alright, have a look at 3D. There we go. Now if this is a bit, I can see it's a bit too much. This is easy now to do all the same. We just move this in. Let's do 150. And we have to begin. See that's what I mean again, you can just nicely work a little bit with um, your eyes, you know, designing it. Oh, and I can see, but be careful here, watch this. It actually, very interesting, it slants that in too. All uh, right, so I don't want this, so let's have a look. Select this and we go there and undo this there, all edges. Ah, it does the outside too, no good. Let's try if I can do this with just the clicked one. Uh, we undo this, click the edge. Yeah, that's the way it has to be. Makes sense, makes sense. There we go. Okay, now you got this nice object in ArchiCAD, which actually is quite helpful. So you can use this as sort of sound collector. Otherwise, you create your own object, look online for BIM objects. Obviously use that one for this tutorial. I can use the solar shade straight. Put on metal grid, applied to different materials, and I just put that in here somewhere. Let's add it there. Go to my A1, and I should this ha should have this somewhere. There we go. Let's drag it up, and we drag it up here. Now, for this purpose, I want to cut through. There we go. And we have a look again. Oh, I lost it now. 
Where did it go? Let's see. Aha. Gotta change these two. 3D, 2D. Oh, good plan. All stories. There we go. Let's go back to my ground floor. That's nice. And we move this in here. All right, so you stretch that over. Uh, even put this there. Nice one. Look at that. Let's see how that looks. Yep, not too bad. We can obviously alter the settings to get a lot more of those. And remember, we got 10 degrees, so you have to rotate this back 10, tilt it. There we go. And we move this down a little bit. Let's try if I can get it there. Yeah. All right. 10. What do I have here? Oh, 8.5. All right. 8.5 it is. Yep. Looking good. Can zoom in a little bit. Let's move around. Okay, so you need to stretch a tiny bit more because we've been stretching it on the floor plan. So let's see if I can stretch it. Hmm. Okay, that's a bit annoying. Can't seem to stretch it in 3D here. First of all, let's move it down a bit. And I want to move it down by 100. Bit far. Let's move it up 50. Okay, so what we got here in my section? Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe we can stretch it here. Let's have a look. Mm, no, doesn't let me do it. So what you have to do is next we measure our fleet 69. So we got 69. Let's make it 69. Let's make it for this purpose 67 and 13 is easier. That's 80. Okay, that must be the other way. Do it again. 59 and 68, maybe make it 70. So 60 and 70 is 130. So 330. Oops. No, 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 330. Ah, it doesn't want to do it. Let's have a look in 3D. Hmm, see? It clearly should go further can't stretch it here. I really thought if I do this, let's just do something here. Yeah, this definitely stretches that way. Ah, it seems to go up, doesn't it? Oh, it stretched that way. That was very silly for me. Okay, here you always learn. So you go back here to my A1, and it did actually stretch, it just stretched the other way. So let's move this here. Ah, see? Great, this is good. Now obviously we need to change those. You've got all the options in here. It's quite a nice little object. Louvre style, number of louvers. Let's just make this 10. See, there you go. You can also the louvre depth, Thickness, rotation angle, let's do this 45. Let's make this 20. Let's have a look. Ah, there we go, that's not bad. And you just need more. Instead of 10, make it 25. All right, so we go down here. That's well, starting to look good. And you can easily change them over to we got here 20, let's make it 120. They just move the other way around. See, there you go. Let's do it a little bit more, 150. There you go. Whatever you feel like you need to do to have them facing the sun. There we go. Let's make it 40. I like that last time. Great. Let's have a look at my whole thing. How easy was that? Just adding some sun collectors on a sloping sort of slanted roof angled roof 
Okay. Great. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this little quick tip and I see you back next time. Bye for now.